So I went to the Formula E race in Hong Kong and really it was great to see and it has a great future that series because the series comes to the people into the incredible, most incredible locations, downtown, capital cities, you know, it's very, very special and e-mobility is the future and it's going to be the technological ba battleground also for all the manufacturers, yeah, like for Mercedes, for Audi, BMW, fighting against each other with their technologies that from the Formula E car will then really go into the road car that you can that you and I can buy anywhere, yeah? So it's really incredible. And even just watching that technological battle going on there is gonna be special. Um, so I'm gonna follow it with interest. I have a lot of uh, drivers that I know also there, team, you know, team people that I know, Mercedes coming in, Porsche. It's gonna be an exciting time and uh, let's see. I'm open-minded, but at the moment, uh, nothing, uh, nothing firm uh, yet. Please put in the comments below which TV series Vivian and I should be watching, yeah? Because we're always on the lookout for one, um, but we can never, we can never somehow find any. So we're really open to suggestions because it could be a cool thing actually over the winter now, um, right? Yeah, sure. To find a cool, uh, find a cool TV series to watch. So for you, those of you who don't know, I took on. Uh, I took on a role with the, the German TV um, to cover the races, and I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm not gonna do all races, so really selected selected a couple of races, some of the greatest races out there, which I'm, which is gonna be uh, cool to join in. And for example, I'll be starting off with Melbourne, um, which is gonna kickstart the season, and after that Monaco, and then we'll see from there. But I'm looking forward to that. It's uh, something that I'll I'll enjoy doing, you know, and and it keeps me close to Formula One as well, and I'll always love Formula One. Um, and I do get frustrated listening to what other people say on TV because <laughs> as a driver of course we really see a lot more and so that would be cool to give some uh, proper insights and uh, yeah so for those of you who are German check in RTL then uh... One of the craziest things that happened to me is that a girl changed her name in her passport to Rosberg so her name is now Mary Rosberg <laughs> Unbelievable like Pretty extreme. I mean, great, thank you so much for the support, but definitely uh, pretty extreme cases. <laughs> um, but the passport, having Rosberg in the passport all of a sudden, pff, that was impressive. Everything is hard, you know, when you do it at the very, very top level. Winning in, in F1 is hard, but also understanding and uh, and being right on top of all the technologies that are in an F1 car is also tough, I'm, I'm sure, but it's very, very interesting. I, I know a lot of it, a lot, a lot about the technologies in the F1 car myself, because I've always been very, very interested in that and try to use it to my advantage also, um, in, in understanding the car better than I knew more what I needed to do to make myself happy driving the car out there. Um, but yeah, I wish you all the best and maybe we'll see you in the F1 paddock then someday. Can I name all of the Bye -bye. countries I've been to? <laughs> yeah, can I? No, probably not. But I mean, a huge privilege yeah, to have traveled so much already, just seen so much of the world. Awesome. But that's why I'm now also at the point where I don't need that so much anymore. I don't need to uh, go out and discover the world anymore because um, I've seen a lot of it, so I'm quite happy now to stay more at home. Um, but if it comes to traveling, then still I, I love the adventure trips. So on the bucket list, list for example, is the safari. Um, with Vivian and maybe when our daughters are a little bit older, everybody go on safari, you know, take cool pictures, see some animals, that would be awesome. No, more, I mean, more intense is, uh, the most intense was being uh, being at, at the races and getting that races, uh, racing done, you know, and trying to win out there. And of course it was, um, was tough sometimes to be away so much, um, which, oh my God. <laughs> Um, which is nice now because that's something that uh, I have uh, and I will be changing more and more um, to spend more time now with, uh, with Vivian and with our little daughters and we have now a great time coming up in the winter where we're going to be ho home here for one month really uh, you know spending a lot of time with them which is going to be special I'm really looking forward to that but the most intense uh, yeah has been whoa my arm is going to come off soon uh, the most intense was was um, fighting for that world championship and that's going to be one of the most intense things that I've ever done in my life and ever will do in my life um, except for our first the birth of our first daughter mm -hmm. I, that was a notch higher and that was pretty damn extreme Yeah, Dan, I'll bring back South African Grand Prix, Kailami. I think that sounds damn cool. It's Las Vegas. That is the mm. absolute...
top notch, highest ever possible, Las Vegas Grand Prix, um, and deciding the championship there, that would be pretty special. I would have to make a comeback for that race. <laughs> <laughs> So Danny, of course, uh, is going to be the, the odd Lewis question, so I'm going to kind of answer that, why not? Um, one, how did I keep my cool on the team? That's what I was racing for, yeah, for that sort of battle. It doesn't get better than that, yeah, to battle against one of the best of all time in the same car as you. Awesome, you know, and, uh, and then to come out beating him in the very end. Better than that is not possible, and that's why he gave me such fulfillment also for my career, because it uh, couldn't have ended in, in a better way and the opponent counts in that, you know? And then, uh, is Lewis as annoying? You know, Lewis really, um, we were really good friends back in the day and and I still have a lot of respect for him and always will have and, and he's, in private, he's a good guy, you know? So, uh, of course, it's always different the way you get perceived on camera and the way you are in that big F1 world, but in private, I can say he's a uh, he's really good guy with some with some good values and everything. So, uh, so I hope maybe with, with time one day we can also get back to, uh, getting on better. No. <laughs> no, Serena, absolutely not. <laughs> no, Serena, thank you for the question, but no, I really hope that they don't uh, want to go into racing. I mean, Vivian would love them to go into racing, right? Totally, but, uh, <laughs> my dream. <laughs> <laughs> but no, 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 I'd be so scared, and no, 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 it would be terrible. My mom never saw a single race of mine, you know? And I can really understand now, because like, watching them doing Stuff like, or even thinking about them going in a go-kart, no way. Dream Poser, what a fitting, fitting name to that uh, question. Um, best day of my life was, uh, was getting married, I would say. Getting married on that day. Good answer. Very good. Right answer. <laughs> right, right answer. Then I would say winning the World Championship has to be up there. The birth of our daughters, I would say no, because it comes with a lot of um, intensity as well, and and worries and, and all that. So it's not uh, it's not that easy to say best day of the life. So I would go for getting married and um, and uh, winning the world championship. Best things that happen there that that, that our daughters uh, are right at the very top of that, of course. Yeah, but best day is not so obvious. What kind of random people have you uh, <laughs> have you picked up from these Twitter questions? <laughs> so broccoli with a picture of the broccoli. Um, my next goals. You like broccoli. My next goals are first of all uh, to be a very very good and successful um, ambassador to brands. Yeah. Where, for example, at the moment I've got uh, Heineken and um, and Hugo Boss and IWC, UBS, and so I've a lot of a lot of cool brands. Uh, Deutsche Bahn, so the German uh, high speed trains. Um, I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. And there's more, more exciting stuff coming. Mattel, for example, where we're going to do, do some charity work as well for kids, which means a lot to me. And um, um, and then uh, other challenges. Mm. Oh yeah, the whole investment challenge. Really, really enjoying that, looking into that, discovering all these startups, people who are incredibly inventive, creative, you know, um, and especially in mobility. So uh, how we're going to get to A to B in, from A to B in future is revolutionizing at the moment. For example, like in, in 10 years time, we can sit here and we can call up a drone and it's going to land at the end there. It's going to be autonomous without a, without a pilot. And then it's going to take us to the airport, you know, and just hop over there five minutes. So our, you know, our, the way we move is going to revolutionize soon. And I'm very interested in that as well. Sam, uh, New Year's resolution for 2018 is, or I think organizing my life better is also going to be very important because it's my, it's a new life now where not everything is so planned and rigid as it was when I was racing. So it um, takes some new organizing, discipline, finding my way there so that I uh, do just the right amount, not, not too little, not too much, you know, and that's I think my biggest New Year's resolution and um, I'm sure I'm going to be able to nail that. And that's why also now I've taken like a month, uh, a month off and just relaxing totally comes into that a little bit as well to really get more settled and get a better uh, plan into life. That would be uh, that would be cool. Louis Hatton wants to know how many languages. Five languages. 
So uh, English, French, Italian, German, and I've picked up Spanish since we're spending quite a bit of time here in Ibiza in the last few years. So I've picked up some Spanish now as well. And mm. very, yeah, it's awesome. It's really awesome to speak languages, you know, to wherever you go, I can come, I can speak to the people in their local, local language and it's really fun. It really helps also in life in general. So I want to um, keep up the languages and maybe one day another one can follow, but I wouldn't know which one at the moment. It's not going to be easy. No Finnish, no Finnish, unfortunately. Never learned it. My, my dad decided not to teach it to me, and so that's a bit of a pity.